Hello, everybody. We are so excited to be back in your ears. This is Angie Holes. and Holes. And I'm recording from Gadigal Land. Evie Jones, where the hell are you? You're never going to believe it. I'm recording from Ghana Land this week. Do you know you, where that is? No, where are you? I, I Radelaide, baby. Oh, so, Radelaide. AKA Radelaide. Oh, yes. by the way, before we get stuck into the really nitty gritty topics, please give me an update of your so far Radelaide experience because it sounded wild from your social medias, <laughs> by the way. I was like, <laughs> what the hell? Did you? <laughs> I took you on quite the trip, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I was really invested. I took invested. you on quite the trip last night. Yeah, I even it was, paused it was... my shows to watch it. <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking, do I tell everyone about what's happening? Am I in the twilight zone? Am I being pranked? Am I being pranked? I got to Adelaide last night and thought, I'm going to eat dinner as soon as I get here and was told that, no, Adelaide's not really somewhere that you go out on a Sunday night. Um, Staying in Hindley Street, which I didn't know, which is pretty much the King's Cross of Adelaide. Um, So everywhere I walked last night, yes, this is what I've been finding out since I posted those stories. Um, I'm walking down Hindley Street and there's just Radeladians around me drunk. Just that's it. That and police. And on a cheeky like, Sunday. Okay, I guess Sunday. It's a cheeky sesh. Sunday. Well, yeah, but not a lot of people. There was just oh. random men drunk. And so I couldn't find I really needed a steak. Couldn't find one. So I went and had some sushi. That was fine. Coming back from sushi, I had, you know, the rental scooters that are everywhere at the moment. Yeah. These two guys coming up on either side of me. Oh, look out, look out, here we come. And I was like, oh, whoa, yo, whoa. And then in front of me, I'm watching this man who was so inebriated, holding his bottle of wine, leaning on a brass statue. Now, they love a brass statue here in Adelaide. Like, love them. They, Do they? they have balls. They have balls of brass. And pigs in Rundle Mall, like, it's a, it's an Adelaidean thing. They, I'm watching this guy and he, I think, I'm thinking to myself, is he trying to kiss this statue? Is he having a chat with it? And then the two guys on scooters went, ah, oh, mate, get down and suck it off. And he's like, yeah, nodding. And I'm like, what is going on? They've gone, ah, oh, we'll take a pic for you. We'll take a pic for you. We'll turn, we'll turn our scooters around and come back. And I just kept walking. And I'm like, what is it with straight men wanting – to give head jobs to either each uh, other yeah. or completely inanimate objects. Um, and in my head, I'm just like, stay classy, Radelaide. Yeah. Maybe um, that was a weird moment. So I went over the road to the convenience store to get myself – I get a litre of milk whenever I'm staying for more than a night or two. By the way, I, I thought get that myself was a, milk. a really interesting fact about you. That's such a, like, <laughs> random kind of old school lady thing to do. Oh, I'm in town for <laughs> a couple is. of days. I'm going to get a litre of milk. Like, well, what? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the fridges they give you those tiny little new yeah. age. Tea mm. things, and you, I love a milky coffee. You do. So I need more than a little dollar. Like it's a dribble out of those things. So I always get myself the first night I arrive. I go to the convenience store and I get myself a liter of milk, and I put it in the mini bar fridge. So I've gone to do that across the road from the hotel that I'm staying at in Radelaide. And as soon as I walked in, it's all open. There's this man sitting behind um, the counter, and he's on his phone. And he said hello, like he was surprised to see me. And I'm like, hi. And I've walked in and I've gone, I'm just going to grab some milk. And he goes, no, 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 no. I went, no, no milk? And he goes, no, no milk. And I went, oh. And I'm looking around and there's all these chocolates and chips and um, cereals and everything. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get myself some chocolate as well because you know me, I love a bit of chocky before I go to bed at night. And so I kind of walked in to grab some. And then I've seen this whole shelf of milk. And I picked up one of them and went, here's a milk. And he goes, oh, that's $5.50. No. You know what? Do you know Maccas? Do you know Maccas? And I'm thinking in my head, what is going on? And then I'm like, yeah, I know where Maccas is because I've just come up from that way. And that was down near the sushi place. And he goes, go to Maccas. Go down to Maccas and there's a laneway next to Maccas. Turn right in the laneway. There's another convenience store. And I'm like. What the hell? What is going on? And I've just, because 
it was so bizarre. I had nothing. And he kept just pushing me out of the shop. And I've just gotten out and I've stood out the front of this convenience store across the road from my hotel going, Emma, is it? I don't want to walk. To back. I don't want to go back down. Like that was a good 200 metres down from where I've come from. My feet were killing me. And I'm like, I just dejectedly walked across the road to my hotel room and I sat in a chair in the corner of my hotel room and I reckon, Angie, I stared for a good 10 minutes. Just like what is life? A look on my face of what is happening in Adelaide? And like why? And why did that just happen? This men giving head jobs to brass statues and completely open convenience stores that will not serve me milk. Just milk too. It wasn't even something next level like oat milk or almond milk or exactly. gluten-free. Exactly. You were just like, I want normal baby cow juice. <laughs> That's all I Angie, want. I would I would have taken a skim at this point. That is so that, weird. The, I would have taken a light milk even, like not even a skim. I would have taken less than more than 2%. Yeah, more than 2%. I would have gone half and half if I was in America. I feel like the straight dudes sucking off the statues is nowhere near as shocking as the milk situation. Me neither. That Thank was you. Me neither. so weird. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a video of... Do it again. Well, a, fit, a photo of, oh, I should go and do, do it, it again and film. Oh, you're not allowed to, though. Is I that, should do it. No, I won't. Is I won't. that illegal? I should go in like um, Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman and go, hey, remember me? Uh, big you mistake. You work on commission, right? <laughs> <laughs> big mistake. Huge. And go in and say, and grab the lobster. <laughs> yes. Walk in with heaps of milks from down the road and go, you work off with commission, right? Big mistake. Huge. Huge. <laughs> So anyway, good. I'm off to shop. <laughs> oh, that is anyway iconic. I loved that. Anyway, I thought that was a nice little update. It's nice I, um, to get life updates. It really is, and it's lovely to give them to you. All right, Evie Jones, I uh, don't have any good straight men sucking off statues or uh, milk <laughs> stories, but I was having this really... Oh, I bet you do. I probably do. I did have a 30th <laughs> on the weekend, so God knows what I got up to. I was probably sculling Ooh. milk and sucking off statues myself, asking for people to take pictures. Just kidding. I was in bed yes, by nine. Do. Um So I was having a chat with friends the other day and I was... Just, you know, you just talk business things. You just talk about how do people mm. come up with business ideas, how do some mm. of them get really successful and how do some of them not become successful. And one that we started chatting about was, remember Sam Wood? He was one of us. I think he was our second bachelor, Australian bachelor. The- he was a third. He was a third. Was there Blake, was Blake. Blake was second. Tim was first. Tim, Blake, yeah. then Sam and Schnezzana. Lovely couple. They've got a few kids. Anyway, he has a company called 28 by Sam Wood, right? I think I've even tried to sign up for it back in the day when I didn't want to go to a gym and I just wanted to work out at home. Great little program. Again, there's 50,000 of them in Australia. I don't know how they manage to even sell and get people to sign up, but they do. Old mate's just sold his for 71 million doll hairs. Are you kidding that is so seventy one million dollars. Much money, and I'm like, she has hit the has hit the jackpot. Yeah, with him definitely. Like, wow. who would have thunk? Just like dating this random PT on the Bachelor back in yeah. two thousand and something that you'd end up being bloody know. millionaires together. Meanwhile, I Not got me. I got tuppence, yeah. and they've got seventy. One million oh. doll hairs. I'm spewing. Just kidding, universe. Please don't take away all the beautiful things you've granted me over this yeah. time. And you never know what your future holds, darling. There you may mean? be a PT in your future with 71 million schnackaroosh to come. Oh, God, I hope not. I'm done with dating PTs. Then, obviously, we got talking about other <laughs> ones. There was Zoe Foster Blake. She sold hers but still owns 51.1% of it for 89 million. That her skincare brand oh go to. God. Like these celebrities, or not even celebrities, these television personalities or whatever yeah. you want to call them, imagine coming up with that one idea and you could become a 71 millionaire. A 71 millionaire? Come on, I mean, 
looks sounds good. You know, to you me. should Lydia Lydia seventy one that and no seventy first floor. No seventy one floor. No seventy first. Yeah, she. No, what no, did she, she went say? to the seventy one floor. Yeah, she was she like was on the seventy. We were on the seventy one floor. Um. Yeah. So that bloody happened. Okay. Look, while while you were just telling me about that, I quickly googled. God, you're quick. Most success. I know. Look, you know me. Fingers. You're not here to bloody quick lick fingers. Stamps, I am. I'm not. I'm not here to lick anything. Although I do. I do just want to say a, a, a public service announcement. We all need to start licking things a little bit more. We need to start licking um, <laughs> handles on doors because our immune systems. Everyone have gone to shit since the pandemic, so we need to get that bad bacteria, good bacteria, fighting our immune systems. Anyway, licking so curbs. What you were taught, we need to lick the back of buses. Oh, honestly. gross! Um, while you're talking about that, I quickly just googled celebrity brands that have succeeded. Okay, who do you think is number one? Okay, without even looking, I'll just say a few, and you say yes or no. Um, okay. I think one that I see, um, maybe like something from the Kardashians, like. Oh yeah, you know the Kardashians have got to be in there, right? Kylie Cosmetics, number- I know, is huge. Yeah, Our skims. she. Okay, the Kylie Jenner stuff. She sold a stake of her business, Kylie Cosmetics, to yeah. a thing called Coty or Coty. I don't know how to pronounce it, and that propelled. That was what propelled her to her billionaire status. Wild. Incredible. And it's lip kits and yeah, makeup. Yeah, that's right. Her because- lip kit was the fastest selling product ever. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy that time. How That was a few years yeah. ago. It was. Remember yeah, how she tried to, tried to trick us all into thinking that <laughs> if you used her lip kits, we could wake up with like a whole new face? Yes, a whole new face. Cheeks, Not just new lips, lips whole new eyes, face, new nose. Titties. You can get a thinner nose from those that lipstick. Big booty, everything. Big and booty. people believed it because it sold out so fast. So she's doing some right. Exactly. You could, you too, like her, could blackfish and have completely different skin when you use that lipstick. Lip, yep. Incredible. And, yeah, amazing. Incredible. Number one is boss bitch, Rihanna. <laughs> yeah, don't say bad girl. And I'm glad it is. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Boss bitch, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. She's a boss and she's a bad bitch. She owns Savage X Fenty (laughs) and it has 50 shades of concealer and 40 shades of foundation. She has changed the game because the amount of um, women of colour who cannot find foundation. How is this only just being brought out? Like that (sighs) is ridiculous. That's how little they are thought of, that it's taken – this long in the world and in history and it's taken a celebrity to come up with that many different shades of foundation and concealer that finally women of colour can just go to the shops and I know. buy their own foundation the way we've always been able Isn't to Isn't that crazy to think that that only happened a few years ago? Yeah, it re- it's quite sad. It's actually. just gross, isn't it? But God, she's a queen. Yeah. Isn't she just so divine? Yeah, she, she is a badass She's a bad gal, even. Mm, she's S and M. Oh God! Is that a, one of her songs? Yeah, but that's yeah. Something <laughs> around the around. Anyway, Kim's up there. She's number two. Let's of course not she talk is. about that. Next. Jessica Simpson, number five. What does she, she have? Um, Tuna of she the made shoes. Of the she, chicken of the sea. She, she should have. <laughs> she should have. I know that is sad an opportunity one. missed. That's a sad one. No. She, she started out initially with shoes that are said to be very comfortable, but they actually ended up being really nice looking as well. So, you know. That would be that's a hard work market because women, yeah. to break into shoesies. Well, it would. But if you have a shoe that's really comfortable and looks good, women are going to buy it because we are so incredibly uncomfortable in most like shoes. Like Frankie Footwear. Exactly like Frankie Ford. Remember when Jeannie, exactly. Jeannie, Gina Liano brought out shoes and she named them all after the Real Housewives of Melbourne and they, and got, they got one of them got proper cross. You can't use and my they name. they got cut. Yeah. You can't use my name without like, my it's just your permission. Name. Like, you can use any name. And then they were like, kind of like Louis geez. Vuitton underneath. Oh, God, I love her. Wow, yes, did anybody but buy they them? they were red. No, the, anyway. Yeah, no, no one bought them. So they didn't do so well. 
But anyway, that's all the, like, you know, we've gone through a few of the good ones. Let's, um, Let's look at fails. Also Google the failed ones. I mean, that's sad because it's, so just, it's just a chance to, you know, feed that ego for being like, oh, rich people, how oh, sad that your business failed. Mm. But... Sorry about it. Not that sorry because the majority of them are already gazillionaires like Nikki Hilton's Nikki O Hotels. You know what? I've never heard of Nikki O Hotels. She Me even neither, has a background. yet I have heard of Hilton. <laughs> well, that's it. It's like you have a background in hotel industry and she still managed to Ooh, not be able to it. get it up and running. The project was dropped when the lawsuit happened. Oh, it was alleged that Nikki failed to promote the project and that she con- – that she – what? Contractor design work. Oh, my gosh. What is? Why would you even put your name to a hotel when you're from a massive hotel like the Hilton and then not follow? Oh, my God. That's a sad one. Yeah, that she was supposed to do herself. Why? I really don't why? know what happened there. What's this players club? That sounds like yeah, it's going to be. I don't even know who that person is. Lenny Dykstra, the players club. Lenny ends up, when you read more, is a baseball player. Yeah. Moving on, don't care. Suzanne Summers. Now, this is a woman from the 80s that I know about. She was in a lot of sitcoms in the 80s. Yeah. Okay? And she has done really well with a lot of active, like, um, exercise videos and things like that. She did really, really well. One of the things she did was Suzanne's Kitchen. Didn't do so well. It was um, home-cooked meal. Um, it didn't. Her and her business partner disagreed on something. Boom, 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 boo. This is one of my favourites. Lindsay Lohan. I know. Because anything Lindsay does is brilliant because it's just, it's always a train wreck. It is. Bless her heart. And God bless her. She was we so iconic growing up. It's such a shame yeah. that, well, it's not actually her fault. It's Hollywood. Hollywood will eventually eat oh, you up and so spit many. you out. But I actually watched her show, um, that Mykonos did show. You? Yes, of course I did. Well, that's what this... That's what, do you what this mean, business did I? was. I'm a sicko. Of I watch you did, every of single reality TV show there is known to man. That's true. Do you know, until this moment, I didn't know she did a reality TV show. Did you not see that meme going around when she flicked her hair and she did that yeah. dance? That was from her show. Yeah. Uh. Right. Well, I didn't know that. I just thought that was someone in the audience taking a video of her getting up on stage in Nick no. and flicking her hair around. I'm going to watch that again when I get and home tonight. Okay, well, I might as well, and I might Google you about, I mean, I might voicemail. What? Voicemail, sext me, slide into my DMs, FaceTime me, MMS. I don't even know what that is. She opened up a beach club in 2018, and not only did she open the club, she also got her own TV show, which is what you've watched. Yeah. Unfortunately, things didn't go well, and after a year, Lindsay lost both her show and her bar. Um, because she didn't know what she was doing, apparently. I like this one, Pharrell. You know celebrity who's just blame other people yeah. for everything instead of taking a responsibility for their own misfailings? Yeah. yeah. Misfailings. I think that's a oxymoron. It's either a failing or a miss. 2010, Pharrell Williams took on a new business venture and that was releasing his own liquor called Cream with a Q. Ugh. Get it? Cream. Quem. Unfortunately, not long after its launch, production stopped abruptly due to poor sales. Pharrell claimed the reason for his company's failure was that the brand was not marketed correctly. As Pharrell aimed for it to be a high-end liquor while it was marketed as a party and club drink instead. Well, mate, have a little bit more to do with your business when it's about to be marketed because you, Pharrell, would have had to sign off on that. Are you Pharrell? And you clearly have. Are you Pharrell Williams? That used to be one of my favourite sayings growing up. I'd always go, are you Pharrell Williams? I'm bringing it back after this conversation. Seems silly not to. Did you know, like, that Britney had a failed business? I I didn't didn't think she could make anything fail, so please do share. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, she she started a restaurant called Nyla, and it was about Cajun food. And from her background in Louisiana, mm. um, it only lasted a couple of months before she what? walked away from it. How or she walked away? If she put some she more time away. into it, it would have blown up. Anything she does turns to gold. 
Oh, that's a sad one. She, the restaurant had so many problems from the food to the chefs to the staff and even financially that Brittany just decided to wash her hands and walk away. Imagine being that rich like, that you could literally just anymore. walk away from a restaurant. <laughs> It doesn't say when it happened, but, you know, she's been through some pretty awful things. So I'm assuming it wasn't during the conservatorship because that would have been, had nothing, she had no control over anything. You know what? So this Maybe must have been before. What's happened is her dad opened it while she was in the conservatorship mm. and then blamed it on her for doing shit because he oh. doesn't take any responsibility over anything ever. And poor Brittany's like, I that didn't even know I had a restaurant. Daddy freaking did it. <laughs> Because he's a dickhead. What was the food again? Yeah, poor thing. She was probably <laughs> poor thing. Trapped in her house off her titties on medicine. She wasn't. She didn't even want to take. Her dad probably did yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. What a that's monster. That's probably very true. And obviously, we don't now, wish failures onto these celebrities. But God, it's no. nice to hear that really, really rich, famous, successful, <laughs> beautiful, hot, stunning people sometimes really fail and f up in life. Well, and yeah, and they can do it majestically. Number one on the failed list, this is, a, I have no idea that this happened, but I can't believe this has happened to someone. <laughs> I mean, I can, but I can't. Yeah. In 1989, Kim Basinger, do you know who Kim Basinger is? I'm to probably going to have to Google it. Okay. She used to be married to Alec Baldwin. She used to be huge in the 80s. She was in a movie called Nine and a Half Weeks with Mickey Rourke. I and mean, it was one of the sexiest sex scenes that had ever been filmed. Yeah. Up to that point in the 80s. She was a bombshell. She was this stunning. Oh, you would know her. She played Eminem's mum oh, in Eight Mile. Oh, yes. Uh, she so is, that was kind hot. of her comeback. Yeah. She was also in the 90s in um, LA Confidential with Russell Crowe and Guy Pearce. It's what put them on the map. But And she was supposed to be the big takeaway from that movie, but it turned out to be the two men who were Australians and, you know, stole the movie from under her, basically. Standard. Um, okay, so we know who Kim Basinger is now. She, in 1989, <laughs> she started off on a unique business adventure when she bought the town of Braselton, Georgia for $20 million. Oh, my God. Kim's Yeah, she bought a whole town. Kim's plan was to make the town a tourist attraction and building something on the land to draw people to visit. Unfortunately, none of Kim's plans came to life and nothing came from the town. A few years after she bought the town, she filed for bankruptcy. Oh, my God. She broke. Oh, how that's really disappointing. Imagine putting all your money into a know. town. What, where is it now? Does it just not exist? Well, yeah, it's still there in Georgia. Does and anybody no one, live I there? Guess, owns, I don't know. What so you could just go that. there and run wild? Well, it's a town. It's like anything. You, 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 I guess you can't just, you know. You can't Wait, if you buy a town, wild. do you become the mayor? I guess you would. Oh, that's cool. Or you just like the owner of the town. Dad, can towns be owned? I'm going to buy Nambo. I'm going to bring it back. That's where you was born. Mm, I'm going to buy it. I wonder how much it costs. Probably gazillions of dollars these days. It's Sunshine Coast, so it would be worth a lot. Oh, but let me, um, Nambour, let me question you this, Evie Justice Jones. If you and I mm. was to come up with a business venture... Oh. What do oh. you think our – what would our audience be? What would our selling point be? Oh, that is a I mean, question. what's our brand? <laughs> we don't have a brand. Dogs? You, you know what Dogs. yours could be? Remember yep. that time you um, would well, – remember that time. It happens all, all, quite often when you're laying in your what? bed. When you're laying in your bed. <gasps> And oh my God, uh, do you remember that? You what literally called it. me. It was great. It's great. I mean, we might have even spoken about this before, but it was ages ago. If Sorry if you've heard this story. If you haven't, welcome. This was welcome. a great invention. She yells out to me. This is when we lived together in Stanmore, bo Gogglebox days. She's like, Angie, <laughs> Angie. And I'm like, oh, you could just get out of bed. So I walked out in the hallway. Let's recreate it. Angie. What? what? Angie. What? Come in here. Come in here. I've got to show you something. <sighs> I get up from where I am. I'm clomped down. No, no, no. Not err. No, I err. And then I'm like, yeah. You open the door. And then you're like, shut the door. And I'm like. Shut the door. I shut And I was it. lying in bed. And I was like. So I was lying in bed. Yeah. Next to the door. 
And, and I, was I like, said, shut the door. Yeah. I was like, why do you want me to shut? I thought we were talking about secrets. And you're like, look And at- I've gone, wait, wait, don't open the door again. Let me open it for you. And I started to pull on a sash, which was from um, a really lovely dressing gown that I had fashioned to the drawer next to my bed oh. and the door handle of the door. So I would grab the sash and I'd start to pull and the door would open. Yeah. So she didn't it? have to get out of bed. So when the dogs... Do you know why? Yeah. So the dogs, because Oscar would scratch at the door to get out when he wanted to go out because there was a doggy door at the back. Mm. He would either go up and have a drink and a wee and then he'd come back. He could push the way in. And he'd do it ten times. He couldn't get his way out. Yeah. So I fashioned myself a door opener you know while what? I was lying in my lazy bed. It is quite iconic and it's the perfect lazy gal door opener if you have heaps of dogs. Back then we had so many dogs. So you didn't have to get up all the time and they didn't have to interrupt your sleep in a way that you could just, instead of getting out, you just pull at this thing. They did shut, then you'd pull it. It was great, but God, it was lazy. It was. Well, that's the thing is that you have to come up with something that lazy people will buy. Yeah. And that is called the Evie Remote Control Door Opener. Yes. It reminds me of when um, I was a teenager and I lived, you know, I have one brother and a lot of foster brothers and we used to have to watch, well, you know, back in the day there was no remote control. So, well, you could have a remote control if you had a really expensive TV, which we didn't. So... If we wanted, (laughs) and we'd get guests over and they'd laugh at us because we'd all be really used to doing this, but people who hadn't seen it before would kill themselves. They would say, someone would say, I don't want to watch this. Can you pass me the remote control? And Grant would pass someone a rod, like a broom handle, and he would push the TV buttons from the lounge (laughs) and change the channel that way. That's so good. That was our remote control. Yeah, that's lazy the, people. That's where you get it from. You get your creativity, laziness wise, through family times. Yeah, because you know it was always your dad who would say, "Angie, come in here for a minute," and you'd come in and he'd go, "Can you turn the channel channel over for me?" My dad like, would never. You say probably that. didn't, but you would have a remote he control. We would. We would. We would have a dad say, "Come in here for a sec." Oh, and while you're coming in, can you grab me a beer? Yeah, that's so shit. <laughs> I would do something like that. Oh, well, I would get up, kids to do that too. While yeah. you're up, do you mind getting me a sandwich? Yeah. A whole yeah. sandwich. Yeah. But that's a good one. I like that. I don't have anything that I could sell. Sad. There's nothing that I... Think I think as a, as a brand for the both of us, we would be... Because we're about dogs and lounges. I guess we could sell... Oh, oh. I've got one. What? A lounge. A lounge that has drink handles, drink things in it for wine. Okay. Stems, because we would always drink wine on the lounge together. Um, And toilets in the lounge. (gasps) Oh, that would be. So you never have to get up and go to the toilet again. You just push a button next to you. Shh. Ew, you and I would end up it being plums. like freaking Charlie from the Chocolate Factory's gross grandparents that never get out of bed if we had a <sighs> toilet chair. The Ooh. buckets. And then we'd teach Charlie the bucket. dogs. So we would never leave the, and then we'd teach the dogs to fetch us snacks. There we go. That's our brand. You're welcome. Oh, thanks for coming. S- about to sell that for $71 million. Yeah, suck on that, Sam and bloody Zoe Foster Blake. We're coming in red we- hot. Give that head job to a statue. <laughs> I'm going to celebrate by sculling some milk from the corner store. We deserve it, girl. UHT. <laughs> hot milk. Not even hot. <laughs> Room temperature. Oh, God. Anyway, I think that's Well, that's us. That's that is us. us. <laughs> On that note, we've... In a, in a nutshell. We're actually very busy and important. We've got uh, uh, design to <laughs> make up for our new couches and dogs to train for our snacks, but... Next time you speak to us, we will have that plan up and running. But until then, you know, you can find us on the social medias. You can slide into my DMs, Angie's of course. DMs. Yes, always Do not mine. Slide into mine. Evie doesn't have the time. She's very busy training dogs. I'm a- and designing lounges with toilets in them. It's it's happening, but I'm here to you answer. You can always all your email questions. us. Yeah, you can. You can email us at two girls at novaentertainment.com.au. Um and on that note, we want to 
please ask you to have the day you deserve. You deserve.